do is write down a title for this, which is Medieval Costuming. Medieval Costuming. The easy way to a medieval costume. And I'm going to ask you to save all your questions till the end and write down anything I say for your gender. Okay? Some of the things will be for both boys and girls and some of the things are just for girls and some just for boys. And we're going to start, start off with the top half. Okay? The top half of your costume. And remember that we're talking about England, so there are times when it can be very cold, and one of the ways that they combat the cold is to put layers, to use layers of things. Um, layers also helps them to be a little more hygienic. When they come into their house, you remember we've talked about the fact that they don't bathe particularly often, uh, they can remove outer layers that have been soiled from their work, leave them somewhere near the door, uh, and then have something that's a little bit cleaner for when they're in the house. Okay? So the first thing everyone's going to want is uh, some kind of long sleeve shirt. Okay? Put that down, long sleeve shirt. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Okay? Perhaps there's something in somebody's closet that looks a little like this. Okay? Ooh, it's already torn. Okay? Perhaps a good costume. But notice that it's just a white shirt, long sleeve, um, made out of a cotton material that would go very nicely for the medieval market. So it could be something like this. Okay? Think about your closet, think about your mom's closet, think about what might work. Uh, another way to prepare uh, the first shirt is to take one of these. Where would we find one of these? Who wears this? Like your dad. Your dad, and what does he wear over it? What does he wear over it? Something like a blazer? Yeah. Okay, so this is a dress shirt, a men's dress shirt. Okay, that's what they're referred to. Some have buttons, some don't. But it's a collared dress shirt. And if your dad has an old one that he doesn't mind you cutting up, I would say use that. You can go to almost any thrift shirt. Uh, thrift store and get one for a dollar or two. They are not expensive items, okay? But they do need to be modified, so you need to be able to cut it up a little bit. You want one that's one color. Get that down, please. One color. Preferably a color that's a natural color. Browns, blues, not necessarily black, okay, but it could be. And the first thing you're going to do is cut off the collar. Okay, cut off this collar. Write that down, please, boys. Cut off the collar. And the next thing you're going to do is cut off the cuff. It would not have had anything that fancy. Okay, cut off the cuff. And then you're going to pull off some of the buttons. Halfway down, pull off the buttons. And in the buttons place, you're going to make a hole. Hole, hole, hole. Maybe with a hole punch, maybe just with a pair of scissors, cut a hole there. Maybe stab a hole with the scissors. Okay. And then you're going to take a piece of yarn, a piece of string, not thread, that'd be too thin, but a piece of yarn, or maybe a leather, a piece of leather cording, okay? That's something that you could get at a Michael's or a Joann's, and then you're going to string it through. Okay? And now you have a shirt that looks like the first shirt that a man would wear. Okay? And that was a pretty simple and easy task. All right? The next thing you're going to want to do is create a vest. And boys and girls need this for uh, their costume, a vest. And again, a very simple way. If I had a blue shirt, I would want to have a contrasting color vest. Okay? I wouldn't want a blue vest. Um, so here's one of my husband's undershirts, and he made me promise I wouldn't cut it up, so whatever. All right, I won't cut it up today. But if I were to cut it up, if I were, 
what would I do to make this into a vest? Okay, so I'm going to take the front and cut it down the middle. First thing. Next thing. Cut off the sleeves. Cut off the sleeves. Next thing. Pink collar. What am I going to do next? You're going to cut off like part of the Yep, I'm going to cut it off right here so I have a vest looking thing. Right? A V. I'm going to cut a V into this. Unless, of course, you have one of those kind of t shirts that's a V already. Okay? Then what do I need to do? Because I've already cut it down the front, now what do I have to do? Um, I don't know, maybe like at the bottom part, like, like the like, seam. How am I going to keep this closed? Oh, um, cut make holes. In, like, right, make holes, lace it up with either yarn or some kind of synthetic leather strap or even a shoelace. How many of you seen brown shoelaces? Ah, they exist. Yes, you can use them. Or pull out an old, sh pull out your black shoelace. You could use that as well. Shoelaces work. Okay. So now I've got the vest. If I were using this as my undershirt, I would, I could do the same thing with the blue T-shirt. Okay. Uh oh, but this one has a logo on it. What am I gonna do? What do I have to do? It has a logo on it. My y'all? Cut, cut around it. Like when you cut the middle. I know, but I'm, can I cut this whole thing? That's my whole logo. What am I gonna do now, Jason? Turn it inside out. Yes, I am. Turn it inside out. Okay. Perfect thing. So any old shirts, these work. Okay. Inside out. All blue, good to go. Yeah. Okay. Now, boys, for the bottom, I have found that one of the simplest ways is to use sweatpants. Or, how many of you play baseball and have baseball pants? Because it'll work with those too. Okay. And it works best if it has these on it, because then you can pull them up. Okay. But these are these are my good navy sweats, and it says navy. Say that. Say navy in medieval times. No. So what am I going to do? Raise your hand, please. CD. Inside out. Yep. So beauty of inside out. Inside out. Boom. Done. Okay. And what does this sort of look like? What does that texture sort of look like? A little bit. Kind of like cotton, like, like the material they use, like sheep or something? Yeah, kind of looks like sheep wool, doesn't it? A little bit, okay? So, an extra added feature when you turn sweats inside out, okay? So, boys, you're going to put these on, and you're going to pull them up. Because they hadn't invented long pants yet. Nobody was wearing long pants. So, you're going to have them up here, okay? Pull them up, which means you're going to have to have something down below. Below that, maybe you go and you find, bless you, some long socks. Okay, maybe you have to check with your mom. She might have better long socks because most boys' socks don't go up to here, and you have to make them go up to there. Okay, so you got your socks up here, you got your sweatpants pulled up here, good to go. Hold on, let me finish first. What are you going to wear on your feet? What do you think is a good choice? What material would be a good choice for medieval shoes? Medieval shoes. Cooper? Leather? Correct. Okay. Maybe you want to borrow your sister's Uggs. That would work. Maybe you want to borrow your mom's boots. That will work too. Maybe you have, maybe your dad has some dress shoes. You know what I'm saying when I say dress shoes, the ones you wear with that dress suit? Okay, you can put those on. Perfect. No sandals. Write that down, please. No sandals, boys. Boys, make sure you write down the materials that you can use. Dress shoes, Uggs, boots, and again, of a natural color. Okay. Don't show up with sparkly Uggs. That would not be so good. Okay. 
Ladies, you are wearing long skirts or dresses. And it's really important that your skirt go to your ankle because ladies were considered to have very bad reputations if their ankles showed or if their shoulders showed. That was just way too much for medieval people to see. Okay, so you want to make sure your shoulders are covered and your ankles are covered. Also, ladies typically wore two to three skirts. Okay, they had over skirts. And again, for the same reason, cleanliness and warmth. One of the ways that you can make a skirt really easily is if you go to a fabric store and buy a fabric called muslin. Please write that down. Muslin. M-U-S-L-I-N. And boys, you can use this for several applications too if you need. So you might want to write that down. It's a very inexpensive fabric, usually like mm, $2 to $3 a yard, and you wouldn't need any more than that. And what it is, is it's a fabric that suit makers and dressmakers use. And what they would do is they would take the fabric, and if I was making um, Olivia a dress, I would take it and I would put it, I would take the fabric and put it on her and cut a pattern out. And then I'd do a little more cutting, and then I'd sew it together, and I'd have her try it on, and I'd fit it. And then once I got a perfect, like a perfect muslin dress, then I would tear it all apart, and I would take the expensive fabric, and I would make the pattern exactly as the muslin pattern was. And that's what uh, pattern makers used to do. So muslin is something you need to make sure that your pattern's right, okay? So you don't want to use the expensive fabric to do that, so you can use this. Um, and muslin comes in white and brown and off-white, so it's really a medieval color and something that you can do a lot of things with. Um, for girls, you can take the um, muslin and simply just put it around you like a skirt. Sew it up the side or glue it up the side, whatever you need to do, and then keep it bunched in with your belt, okay? Which leads us to the belt. Everyone has to have a belt. Everyone. A belt. Okay. Could, be, could be a leather one like this. A could be something, okay. this was something like this. Maybe your mom made a fashion mistake like I did and bought something like this and she's like, oh, she just hasn't thrown it out yet, I don't know. But clearly this was a fashion mistake. Uh, and you, okay, put it on. Now everyone's going to, you would have, the, and, and the way you wear your belt is different than how you would wear your belt today. Okay, so you're going to put your skirt or your pants on, okay, and then your shirt's going to go over it, your shirt's going to lay over it, your vest is going to lay over it, and then your belt is going to go over the top. Okay, because a lot of times the belt had to keep everything together. And ladies, if you have a skirt that's too big, you can keep it together with your belt. Okay, it won't fall down. The belt sort of is like the elastic. Okay, everybody carried stuff on their belt. Write that down, please. One of the things that you always carried with you was a cup. Okay, and the handle to the cup would go through right here. Because if you went somewhere, People didn't have extras for you. Okay, they couldn't. They didn't have like 12 cups, and they could say, "Oh, here, welcome, come to my house. Here's some, here's some milk to drink." Okay, so you brought your own cup, you brought your own knife, and your knife was twofold, a twofold purpose: one for protection and one for eating with. Okay, and it was a small daggerish style knife, and many people slipped their daggers back here and kept them for both protection. And eating. Okay? They didn't have forks. Forks were not invented yet. They had spoons <coughs> and they had knives. 
No forks yet. Oftentimes people had little purses or pouches that they would hang off of their belts. And the reason being is they didn't have pockets. Okay? If they had something they were carrying, they attached it to their belt. So it's kind of it's kind of a utility belt. Anything you need hangs off. Off your belt. Okay? Chandlers. The candle makers used to uh, hang the wick of the candles over so that they could travel and carry more stuff. They hang them there and then they could go and barter for their candles. Okay? So everything you had was right here on your belt. Okay, but everyone does need a belt uh, and it's a, I would expect to see at least a couple of items on your belt as well. Okay. Ladies, for you, shoes, same sort of thing. Bugs. Uh, you probably wouldn't wear your dad's dress shoes. You could probably find something else. Uh, make sure that they're natural colors. Don't no uh, neon ballet slippers, please. Uh, browns, blacks, beige, whatever color that might be. Okay. And again, you can wear boots, you can wear Uggs, wear flats. But don't wear sandals, nothing open toed. Okay. Questions? If you wear boots that say go up to right there, do you have to wear long socks? No, you can tuck them in. Okay. Um, could the socks, like long socks, could they be red? No. Red would not have, especially the color that I suspect the red is. What kind of. Um, Cup, do you need? Cup. Do you need to carry a I'll take care of it. Okay. Huh? Yeah, some summer. kind of cup that has a handle on it so, so that it can go on your belt. So it doesn't have to be in between. So it can be plastic. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, well, would you be able to have like, a certain kind of design overnight? Mm -hmm. You'll have to show me. Wait, not, you're not bringing a real knife. You're, mad, you're fabricating one. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, fabricating. You're not bringing. Not trust me. You're not. Knife. No. You're not bringing a knife. No one's bringing a knife. Oh. That's that's a good question. Basing it on your job, and the reality is that candle makers, and butchers, and bakers, and alchemists. All wore the same thing for the most part. Okay? Yes. Wear a skirt over. You know, like those knife pouches? Uh, can we have those? Yes, as long as you don't have that knife for that pouch on there. All right. Okay. Well, what would knights wear? Good question. Knights. Okay, so let's think this through. Let's think sweatpants. What color? Sweatpants might go good for a night. Blue? Gray. Gray. Okay. Gray sweatpants, gray sweatshirt, a, a piece of muslin. If you took the muslin and you fold it in half and you cut a hole out of it and you put it over your head and tied a belt around you, you would look like a crusader almost immediately. Paint the front of that muslin, good to go. Okay. The other thing that knights can do. Uh, is the old milk carton helmet where you cut the back off, cut a slit up here in case you have a big old head and you can still get it in, spray paint it, cut some eye holes in it, little place to breathe, put it on your head, good to go. You laugh, I've seen it done a million times. It's very cute. Darling! All right, other questions? All right, I want to show you a few pictures from last year's market so that you can see um, what they were doing. CD, can you get the lights for me, please? And don't blow anything out. Attention, please. Okay. All right, so here's some girls with a dress shirt. 
put together. This, this young lady has um, a long dress as well as her shirt underneath that she has going on. This is our own Jolie Jacobs right here. That shirt was pretty big, wasn't it, Jolie? Mm -hmm. Yep, and she got it all tied up and ready to go. Okay, we got the vest going on, the big belt, several skirts. Okay, also look at their booth. They've got their table set up with a little, just a little tablecloth, all their things out, their signs. Okay, looking very good, ready to go for the market. These are some wooden swords that they made for their uh, their masterpieces. Again, this was done out of muslin. This part is all muslin underneath here. Okay, and you'll notice too that they're wearing some aprons. Ladies, that's another thing you should write down. Most women wore an apron of some kind that they could uh, wash and dry their hands with. Okay. Aprons again. Notice this shirt is done exactly how I asked him to do it. Okay, this guy took his, hit the muslin, and again, he put it over his head, cut the hole, and belted it together. Okay, so it looks like a medieval shirt. It doesn't look like a shirt that you're going to the commons in on Friday night, but it looks medieval. And this was all their masterpieces. This is what they did for theirs. Okay. Again, all their signs ready to go. My archers. You should know all these people. They're eighth graders now. Okay, they're trade items. Um, they made these little uh, things to hold. I can't think of the name of it right now. That they hold their arrows in. Quivers. Quivers. Thank you. Quivers. Okay. Here we got this vest. That is one pretty man-made vest there going on. This is our procession, ladies, no C's. We got some boots, some ballet flats, a couple of skirts, aprons over. Um, head coverings too. You should you should probably try to have some kind of head covering, only because you remember that their hair is really icky, and a head covering is a way to keep it out of your face. Some more ladies of the market. Here's a good example of a head covering that was typical, okay, where there was a band and then sort of a floppiness on the hat. They had baskets that they went around to trade items with. Here's some blacksmiths. Okay, they put together this whole scene for their masterpiece. Again, Big floppy white shirts, muslin pieces that we're seeing. Uh, and they sort of outdid themselves on their sign there. Okay. Here's our procession. Okay, again, this style of shirt is very popular now. Okay, it's coming back. It's a new retro 70s look coming back. So there's a lot of places that sell this shirt. If you be careful at the market, you can wear it again this summer. Just saying. See, mom's boots do go well sometimes. They can look very medieval on a young man. Again, another example of a masterpiece. These guys were bakers, but they didn't make a big, uh, a big piece of bread for their masterpiece. They made an oven instead. Okay. More head coverings. Um, people have asked if bakers should wear those long chef hats. No. no. Okay, that's uh, that will come later, much later, in the French kitchen, and it has a specific purpose, which has nothing to do with medieval times. So no big chef's toques, as they're called. And notice their signs, too. This is how we did it. This is what we're doing. Okay, not just, it doesn't just say baker. Another good example of a head covering, okay, with uh, Mrs. Werber taking this poor kid out. They were doing a medieval market yearbook shot, so had to look like the, the mean queen. 
Um, but his head covering is a good example of what boys would have worn. Okay. Vintners. Poor Drew got a little carried away with his vintning. But again, these are t-shirts that have been cut, put back together with yarn. They're belts. Okay. And actually, it should look like this. Do you see how this would be a standard way you would want to wear it? That's how you would wear it today, yes? Shirt tucked in maybe with a belt. Okay, and this is how you want to wear it, with your shirt over your pants and your belt over the shirt. Okay, because you didn't have belt loops then. They didn't have that. So another good example. Um, questions about any of these costumes? CD, can you get the lights for me again, please? I all? Um, for the vest over it, like, uh -huh. or for the shirt, should we cut it all the way down, or the string, or only like? Depends. The for costume. the shirt, if it's the first shirt, it should come to about here. If it's a vest, it should go all the way down. Okay. Hi. Uh, do we have to wear like a vest? Or yes. We, like, Everybody wore a vest in those days. Um. So we put like an apron over the vest. You could. Yes. Yes, as long as it's one color. Okay, and okay not the typical bandana that you would buy, like the red one with the yeah, designs. And also, like for like shoes with like, for instance, like, like Doc Martens, like work. Not really. Okay. Ooh, that's, Ooh. Be. <laughs> that's quite a maiden there. Yeah, some people did. Did you notice how some of the girls had like um, flowers, flower ones around? That would have been something that they would have worn on a very special occasion, something for a market time or a festival or some occasion that they were celebrating. Um, do you have to like tuck the vest into the skirt? Or do you no, it should. All those things should be over the skirt. Things were not tucked in back then. Okay. They weren't worried about their shape back then. They everything came out and then they tied it up with the belt. Okay. Any more questions? Good. Um, go ahead and put this away.